Welcome. Um, it is such a thrill for us to have everyone here today. Um, obviously, we want to do a ribbon cutting grand opening. Actually, it's going to be a, a plant cutting opening ceremony. We thought it was appropriate because we're pretty proud of what we've accomplished here at CCA. To give us a little bit, a little bit of an overview um, of the school and what we're about, for some of you that aren't real familiar with CCA, let me start there. I'm Maurice Flory. I'm the CEO of CCA. I've been with the school since 2009, CEO since 2011. As a school, we're a statewide cyber charter school, which means we're a public school and we serve students from grades K through 12, which means from kindergarten age up through the age of 21, depending on the student's academic needs. We currently enroll over 9,200 students statewide. We have students enrolled from every county of the Commonwealth. Of the 500 school districts, we enroll students from all 500. Because we are a public school, it's very important that any facility we build is available to all our students. So what you see here today, even though it's based in Harrisburg, you see AgWorks here, some people will talk about how it's accessible to all our students, no matter their zip code in the state of Pennsylvania. Some people may ask why. Why, why a facility like this in a public school, in a charter school, in a cyber charter school? It's pretty simple. It's because it was the right thing to do. As we talk to multiple employers, multiple businesses, as we talk to folks in higher ed, one of the things we hear regularly as a school is a lack of some fundamental skills that apply to the workplace of students coming out of high school. And so as a school, our mission has always been to prepare kids for careers not just to walk across the stage with our diploma in their hand. That's just a step in the journey. So we want to talk to our students about what do you want to do when you're 25 and 30 years old? How do you want to contribute to your community? What type of lifestyle do you want? And let's build that high school program and build it forward. So with the input we had from higher ed and from our business partners and from different people in the trades, and what we heard from the business partners it was important for us to look at our facilities as something that can launch students in the careers. AgWorks is our first step with that. While it's based around agriculture, which is one of the three biggest employment sectors in Pennsylvania and helps push Pennsylvania's economy, students have a chance to experience electrical contracting, HVAC, all the construction trades, as well as computer science, business principles, and supply chain economics as part of this facility, and some of our folks will talk about that in much more detail. So when you look at this facility, don't think of it as just a soil-free, state-of-the-art, 21st century agriculture facility, which it is, it's more. It's a launching pad for Pennsylvania students to have real skills that can be applied in the workforce. Next, I'd like to introduce Tom Longenecker, who's our Chief Operations Officer at CCA, and he can speak into more detail about our programming with AgWorks and how it fits into our overall uh, vision of the school. Tom. Thank you, Reese. We really appreciate all of you joining us here today as we dedicate our AgWorks facility. I uh, would also like to welcome those of you who are watching on Facebook Live and participating with this dedication event. Your support has helped make this moment possible. Dr. Fleury already mentioned CCA has been a school focused on career readiness. That is our core mission. Uh, our hope is that with facilities like this and future facilities such as AgWorks, uh, TechWorks, and MedWorks, which are, we're looking to locate in other regions of the state, it will help fix Pennsylvania's current and projected skills gap. We knew we, when we began our search for a central Pennsylvania facility, we would need to find one with the capacity to launch the CCA Works program. That's the program that AgWorks is a part of. The three initial programs under CCA Works are, of course, AgWorks here in Harrisburg, TechWorks in Pittsburgh, and MedWorks in Philadelphia. We picked these three regions as a location for these lab concepts to match the growing industries that are needed for those, uh, to provide skilled employees for those areas. In the Harrisburg region, agriculture is part of our fabric. According to the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, 
Agriculture and food-related industries employ nearly 500,000 people across the Commonwealth. It is estimated by 2025 there will be 75,000 new and replacement job openings in agriculture and food careers in Pennsylvania. Folks, that's just six years away. AgWorks is committed to helping produce the future workforce to meet those demands. CCA has been looking for probably about two years for the right facility for this Harrisburg region, and when we found this location, we knew AgWorks would be a natural fit. This atrium is perfect to construct this type of lab. We are also close to some of our early planning partners, such as INTAG, Messiah College, Penn State Harrisburg Biogenetics, and the Department of Agriculture. We are thrilled that other partners have emerged during this process, including the South Central Pennsylvania Food Bank, the Hilton Harrisburg, Susquehanna Harvest, Black and Blue. Although some of these partners are not directly STEM related, but they are also providing entrepreneurial opportunities for our business-focused students. They are helping our students learn about preparing production schedules, pricing, and supply chain management. To everyone here and in person watching on Facebook, we have lots of room for more partnerships. We're not done yet. There's an opportunity for everybody to participate with these types of labs. CCA believes schools must come together with employers to ensure tomorrow's workforce is ready to carry the Commonwealth forward. Our aquaponics director, Samantha Johnson, will discuss the many program opportunities in more detail, but allow me to talk about how this lab was paid for. That's a question we commonly get. Uh, every public school in Pennsylvania receives federal grant money called Title I. Title I money is used for STEM development type programs, uh, curriculum. So during the last couple of years, uh, we've used this school, this type of funding, to build uh, mobile classrooms and provide real world hands-on learning opportunities to the four corners of our state. During the 2017 school year, we used these dollars to construct this lab and our mobile aquaponics trailer that many of you passed on the way in in the front. Uh, CCA plans to use future allocations to construct the TechWorks and MedWorks labs. This facility will not only benefit CCA students, but the Commonwealth as a whole, as we welcome other schools, nonprofit organizations, government and community groups to share in the learning experience. CCA is a public school when we welcome other public and private students to come and learn with us. For our families watching at home, look for even more opportunities for students around Pennsylvania to get involved with AgWorks at CCA. I would now like to introduce our Director of Aquaponics, who has been with CCA for 13 years as a science teacher and most recently elementary assistant school principal, Samantha Johnson. Good morning and thank you all for coming today. One of the core principles as an educator is ensuring that I am creating good stewards of our environment and active participants in the community. Throughout my educational career, I've seen small instances of that happening, you know, that light bulb moment going off with students. But teaching science can be rather difficult depending on the learner. Some of these concepts are a little difficult to understand, especially when it comes to terminology. So having a lab like this, a facility like this, where I can actually tie in those real world concepts outside of science, you have math, you have social studies, uh, all of the STEM fields really get tied in. That way students can really see how the nitrogen cycle works. They can see how, if you wanna be a lighting technician, how that portion functions within the lab. So for me overall, I'm very excited for the use of this facility, but also as a cyber charter school, I have to ensure that what we're creating here in the lab is also accept accessible to students across the state. So first, I wanna highlight the somewhat easier to understand component, which is how students can get involved working in the lab currently. Uh, we have students that come in from kindergarten, middle school, all the way up through 12th grade. Most students right now, they're participating in a club. Uh, but we do have some students that are participating in independent study projects. Um, that's most of what you're seeing standing before you today. Uh, students, they heard about this even back in June when we were first undergoing our construction process. I had some students go, 
you know, I want to understand how this entire process works. How do you construct something like this? So he was actually willing to give up part of his summer to come in and work with the installers with Intag to help actually create what you see before you today. I met with some other students at the end of the school year as well. Um, one student in particular that uh, he and I share some common ground when it comes to Japanese culture. And I brought up, you know, in, in Japan, you can actually create uh, these molds that you can snap around produce to create star-shaped cucumbers, uh, square-shaped uh, watermelon. Uh, and he got a little bit excited about that. Now, his background was more with coding and engineering. Uh, same with another student. She was also really interested in that as well. So when they come in and they work in the lab, one of the things they ask is, you know, how can I give back? You know, how can I use my current skill set and my current interests to really drive what's going on here? So some students can come in, they learn how to propagate, they learn how to seed, they learn how to care for our fish, the main driving factor of the lab. But you have other students that might want to build an auto feeder, so that way I don't have to come in every weekend or come in over the holidays. Um, so you're actually going to see a prototype of some of that work today. And during the tours, you're going to hear about how these students are really expanding their learning and skill set by working in this lab. Now, for those of you that might be listening on Facebook Live or you might be hearing about this through word of mouth, there are many more opportunities available for students to work in the lab. Um, again, that starts with elementary all the way up through high school, but if you are a high school student, you can earn independent study credit if you're really willing to commit to the lab. Now, some students might think, wow, you know, ag works at CCA, that's really interesting. I've already kind of tried to dissect a little bit here for the group that there's more to offer in the lab than just your, your typical mind frame of agriculture. Uh, usually in Pennsylvania, when students think of ag, they think of dairy farms and they think of traditional soil-based agriculture. But there's a lot more going on in the lab, a lot more learning opportunities. Um, I talked about using that auto feeder, uh, but we also have students that might want to be communication majors. You know, they might want to go into marketing. They might want to create some of those fun YouTube videos that require a lot of back-end work with scripting and lighting and everything else that goes into that. And those are all students that I can create projects for. So I'm really excited for today for the grand opening to really expand on what's currently going on. I also have had a chance to train. We've also trained all of these students how, on how to work in the lab. Because as great as this facility is, I'm not looking to bring on a ton of staff members to run it. I really want students to run it. And out of everybody, these are the core group of kids that have been really running the day-to-day -day operations of the lab. So that way when my next group of kids comes on board, they can actually train them on what to do and how to do it with very minimal oversight. So I'm very excited to get my next crop of students to come through. Uh, but that's for students that actually live in this area. What about my students that live in Erie or Pittsburgh or Philadelphia? So in being very mindful about developing the lab, we actually partnered with a company called BioHiTech. Uh, they are Harrisburg-based. They installed sensors throughout the entire lab. So if students are really interested in data and understanding the mechanism, the science behind the lab, they can actually log onto our system and see a dashboard that has all that information. They can download that information and they can make sound decisions based on that data. Because even though this is an example of controlled environment agriculture, you know, I control the humidity, the temperature and all of that, it is an ecosystem. So things will go wrong. And I want my kids to have the skill set to identify what's going wrong and make data-driven decisions based on that information. We also, you're going to see some prototypes in the lab of uh, some video cameras and some stagnant cameras as well. That's so students can log on and they can do experiments in real time. So we have students right now that are middle school or even high school that might help out at their parents' business or they might even have their own job or run their own business. And so that sometimes takes them out of the classroom during your traditional school day. So they might be logging on and checking out the cameras for their experiment at midnight. They'd be able to do that in order to get their coursework done. We've also installed or are in the process of installing solar panels on our roof. Those solar panels will 100% power AgWorks at CCA. That will also have its own separate dashboard, so that way students can again expand their learning, understand what kilowatt hours are, which tends to be also another hard concept for kids. That will all eventually appear in our curriculum. We are starting to develop standard, standalone courses, of course tied into all the state standards, college and career readiness standards. That way if a student wants to take a more stringent elective course, they, they can. 
we're hoping to partner with colleges and universities to help develop that curriculum. So it's very exciting for our kids that might want to go on to college upon graduation because they can look and see, wow, this was Penn State certified or wow, this was certified from Messiah. So they know all of those prerequisite skills in order to be successful in the lab. And that brings me to my last thing to highlight, which I know you guys can't see from up here in the Welcome Center. Uh, we do have three supporting labs that you'll be able to see today. You'll be able to see two out of three. So aside from what's, a what's able to be offered here, we also have a tissue culture lab, a research and development lab, and a genetics lab. Those are really the big tie-ins for colleges and universities to be able to come in and help train our students. That way they know basic lab skills, basic lab etiquette, how to sterilize their station. They know all of that before they even go to college. Or if a student might not want to go to college, they can at least pursue an entry-level position at a lab because they already have all those skills. You will see two out of three of those labs. The genetics lab, that one is going to probably be a separate unveiling since it's still under construction. But you'll get to see how students are currently using those two supported labs in the main lab. All right. <laughs> So we, uh, in conclusion, I will say when you walked in, I know that uh, Tom and Reese had mentioned we do have a mobile classroom uh, that has been deployed all over the state. We've brought it to Phipps, we've brought it up to Scranton, we've brought it out to Erie. Um, so again, so if students want that real hands-on experiment, experimentation, they have a mobile classroom with living fish and plants. All right. So I am going to go ahead and hand it off to one of our pupils, uh, Nathan Sachs. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nathaniel Sachs. I'm a junior here at Commonwealth Charter Academy, and this is my sixth year in attendance here. If you told my friends what I'd be doing this morning, quite frankly, they wouldn't believe you or understand why I was chosen to speak in front of such honorable guests. I'm not that sure either, but it's a testament to the opportunity CCA has given to me and my peers. I started out my educational career at a small private school with an average classroom size of about 16 students. The school is very focused on standardized testing scores, particularly in the area of mathematics. I'm not exactly a stellar math student, and there are some areas that I'm better in than others. The school had a very uh, generic approach to education. There would be a short instruction time that was followed by lots of uh, practice. In areas that I understood, I could keep up, but in areas that I had a hard time with, I would fall behind and become very irritated with myself for not falling into that cookie-cutter math student. By the end of my fifth grade year, my parents had me try several different virtual lessons from different cyber schools of the time. CCA's lesson stood out to me by far, and I said that I wish I could join cyber school. After intentionally overhearing their conversation that night, I learned that they knew the cyber... <laughs> they... <laughs> yes, uh, bad, bad fifth grader, I know. <laughs> Uh, they understood that the, cyber, op or the uh, cyber option would be a better option for me and that the physical classroom environment wasn't working too well. I'll never forget, we watched Oz the Great and Powerful, and when we went to McDonald's after that movie, after I was scarfing down my two cheeseburger meal, my parents said that I could try the cyber op option as long as I kept up with my work. From that opportunity, I took it and ran, and I developed self-confidence and motivation to do work that has carried over to my job and my internship here at AgWorks. After I started here at CCA, I learned the importance of making a phone call. If there was a topic that I struggled in, I would call my teachers and they would take as much time as was needed to help me understand a topic that I struggled in. I grew to thoroughly enjoy these calls with these teachers as they would further enrich my classroom experience. One of these friendships is with Mrs. Lauren Freeland, who's a biology teacher here at CCA and will be one of our guides today. Around the time I had started my sophomore year, I began to get very heavily involved in building aquariums, specifically with live plants. I was, and still am, very fascinated with how so many factors come together to make one healthy ecosystem. Around the time, I also began breeding freshwater micro-oriental shrimp, and I used my honors biology research project as an opportunity to study how one specific water factor affected the life and the health of my shrimp. I would frequently call Mrs. Freeland with comments and questions and updates on my project, so she knew very, very well of my love for aquariums and ecology. Over the summer, she set up a meeting with Mrs. Johnson, and she told me of this magnificent lab that was being built that combines so many of my interests together into one lab. I was very eager to join the AgWorks team. 
Now that I've had my internship here for a few months, I've been able to learn skills that will help me have a career in controlled environment agriculture. I've learned how to safely harvest and package our produce. I've learned the thoughtful designs from the engineers of this facility. And I've been exposed to and trained on equipment that colleges, much less high schools, don't have access to. While I am concerned how we're overtaxing Earth's resources, I find that aquaponic systems are the future, allowing us to grow large volumes of food in much smaller areas using less water and no soil. Thank you all today for joining us to celebrate this feat of technology. I'd like to welcome Representative Mark Keller as our pre keynote presenter for today. Well, thank you very much, Nathan. I, I appreciate that, that very much. You know, <clears throat> who would have thought we'd have been talking about aquaponics as agriculture? Think about it. And think about the excitement here today that is happening with Ag Works. It kind of gives you that wow factor, that factor of agriculture in a lab? Who, who would have ever thought of that? But that's what today is all about. It's about this lab, it's about these students who, who continually do a tremendous job in learning how to actually produce produce and, and uh, sustainable agriculture in a way that people aren't used to looking at. As vice chair of, of the Ag Committee for the House of Representatives, it's, it's important that we think about agriculture more than just plowing the land and, and turning the soil and those type of things. It has changed over the years and there are different things that we need to address. And this is one of the ways to address that. I also sit as chair of urban affairs. A guy from Perry County sits as urban <laughs> chairs, urban affairs chair. But I would like to tell you the fact that when I became chair of urban affairs, I met with my committee to organize, and, and one of the things that I looked at, I saw most of my committee members were from the urban area, of course. They weren't from a rural area. And I said, I'm going to change how we actually conduct our business at urban affairs. Not, not that we're not going to look at brownfields and, and blighted areas, but I'm going to bring an agricultural perspective to it perspective to it. And one of the things that we talked about was just this. Think of the warehouses that are open in these urban areas, that nothing's in there. This is the start of where substantial produce and food can be brought to those areas that is fresh and is not destroying the environment itself by using fertilizers or whatever items you may be using. But, you know, when I think back of the years that I spent in the field and still do and, and will continue to do, uh, I also think about we have to think outside that box. And I think that uh, th this organization has absolutely thought out, of the thought out of the box and is teaching our youth, our future, of there's more to agriculture than just plowing a field. So I would just want to congratulate everybody that's here. I want to congratulate the students and I want to congratulate everybody that is involved with showing that this can be done. I, I had the opportunity earlier this week to stop by here and actually get a personal tour. I was uh, really taken back. You know, when, when you talk about the fish waste as, as nutrients in, in those, those ponds that are out there, and how the plants take those nutrients out of that, that water and make that water clean. It goes back into, into the use of the, of the fish itself. But when you say excited, and I've sp spoke with Sam many times, talk about a, a, an instructor that's excited. I don't, I don't know how else to explain her, but really <laughs> excited <laughs> you know, about what she does and how she does it. But I, I just, again, want to want to compliment and, and uh, hopefully that this opens up the eyes of a lot of people throughout the, the Commonwealth and the world as to what can be done and what will be done as we move into the future of agriculture in general. So, again, thank you so much for inviting me to be here with you. It's been, a, been an honor and a privilege to, to speak. Thank you.
Thank you, Representative Keller. Um, a few recognitions um, that we need to do um, because we have to be sure we recognize the people that we appreciate being here that helped, this, that helped us with this facility. First of all, I'd like to recognize our elected officials, Senator John DeSanto, again, Representative Mark Keller, <laughs> Representative Sue Helm, and Harrisburg Mayor Eric Papenfus. <laughs> Facilities like this and schools like ours would not be possible without support from our elected officials, and we can never discount that or forget the thank yous necessary for our elected officials to make this, these type of things happen. Also like to mention our community partners, Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the Harrisburg Regional Chamber in Cretic, Central Pennsylvania Food Bank, Intag Systems, they constructed this facility. That's got to go with premier mention. Harrisburg Hilton, Harvest Seasonal Grill and Wine Bar, Bio High Tech, PSU Harrisburg, and SEMA Network. Thank you to all our partners. And the the next group I would like to thank is the group that kind of supports the mad scientist and all of us and the administrative team here at CCA. When we come up with ideas like this, they go, I don't understand it, but go ahead. <laughs> all right. Because they understand our primary motivations are always what's best for kids and what's best for our families and what's best for this commonwealth. So I'd like to recognize two of the CCA board members that are here today, Senator Jeff Pacola. And this is Lil Jackson. They're more than board members to what we do here at CCA. They're our evangelists yeah, <laughs> that preach what we do and continually talk about that in the community. The final group I have to thank before we go through the formal ceremony is our students and parents. It's a unique educational environment. We have to thank the parents for the trust to taking this strange leap in this brand new form of education and trust us with the education of your children. I often say you don't get second chances at second grade. You don't get second chances at a freshman year in high school. Each single day and each single year is valuable. So to the parents, thank you very much for that trust and for the students that allow us to celebrate our vision and to see what you accomplish here. Thank you for letting us see in the end product. <laughs> and now for the ceremonial harvest. We'd ask that each of the students take a pair of shears. Are we ready? Ready? Go ahead. And finally, before we get a chance to break out the tours, Mayor Eric Papenfus has a proclamation from the city of Harrisburg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Wow, my first lettuce cutting. That is, uh, <laughs> that is a, a record. So let me just say a couple of quick thank yous. First, uh, a thank you to Chairman Keller along with uh, Senator DeSanto, Representative Helm, uh, Chairman Keller, as head of the Urban Affairs Committee, led a bipartisan coalition to, to help Harrisburg. And working together, we crafted uh, a, an excellent solution for the future of the city. And I think it's a great example of what we can all do when we put our minds to it. Um, secondly, let me say thank you to, um, the, uh, to CCA for uh, choosing to put Ag Works here in the city of Harrisburg. Um, theoretically, you could have gone anywhere, but you chose this facility, and um, I couldn't be more impressed with the renovations and uh, what I'm seeing before me. It really is inspiring. 
I want to thank you also publicly for doing something which um, maybe not all of you realize, which is that uh, very early on, CCA stepped up and uh, approached me about paying a pilot to the city of Harrisburg, which is basically a payment in lieu of taxes, since it would otherwise be a, a tax-exempt facility here. And we have utilized that and put that money to good use. And in fact, it has helped us in bringing in other pilot dollars from other community leaders. And thank you for doing that. Um, and thank you to the students. This is an incredible opportunity. I'm impressed with each of you. This really does represent, uh, you represent the best and the brightest, and this represents the future. And in a time when many of our, our schools, at least here in Harrisburg, are, are, are failing, um, this, this is the future. And uh, I will make it my mission to uh, tell every parent in Harrisburg about the opportunities that are here and to hopefully help uh, bring many in for tours of the facility so they can see what's going on here. It's very, very impressive. So, yes. So with that, I get to do one of my favorite things, which is bring a proclamation and officially uh, uh, open you and allow us to go on a wonderful tour down below. So I'm going to read it to you. And, uh, and here it is. So whereas the city of Harrisburg is honored and proud to join the thousands of Commonwealth Charter Academy families, as well as the chief executive officer and board members of the Commonwealth Charter Academy, for the official opening of AgWorks at Commonwealth Charter Academy, the largest public educational aquaponics facility in the country. And whereas the Commonwealth Charter Academy headquartered right here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, has been a valued and innovative member of the educational community. And whereas the Commonwealth Charter Academy has dedicated its mission to learning in all forms for its students and the community at large. And whereas the AgWorks at Commonwealth Charter Academy facility is just the latest example of this commitment, a hands-on learning opportunity demonstrating the feasibility of harnessing renewable energy resources and technology to power innovative production techniques and create career experiences for two of the Commonwealth's largest industries, energy and agriculture. And whereas the AgWorks facility will be coupled with a mobile laboratory to provide learning opportunities throughout our Commonwealth. Now, therefore, let it be proclaimed that I, Eric Pappenfuss, as mayor of the city of Harrisburg, do hereby recognize and join in our partners in government and the private sector to celebrate today the grand opening of AgWorks at Commonwealth <laughs> Charter Academy. Congratulations, <laughs> sir. Now for the moment everybody's been waiting for, we'll break up for tours. So, here on the mezzanine, we have um, a high production area, and we are growing things for uh, Hilton, Harvest, uh, Black and Blue Restaurant, uh, and the Food Bank. Yeah. So, a lot of exciting things happening up here. We have nutrient-rich water that's being pumped through each one of these trays to the plants, and the one thing that I've noticed is the grow time. It is significantly lower. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, lower, faster. Sure. Right. Um, than, you know, typical soil production, and that water is coming from our koi tank below us, which we'll get to see on the tour as we as we move along. So and, no soil. So what holds the plants in place? How do they? Uh... So we have. You can see yeah. that there's uh, these cubes that are in there, and they're soaking in, in the water. That's, mm -hmm. The water's coming through the tube and soaking through. Um, so these, these squares are holding the plants in place. What we're going to discuss here is aquaponics versus hydroponics. Okay. Now aquaponics is basically ran like by fish waste and gets transported to the media beds and the float beds. And we'll get to that shortly then. What we're discussing first is hydroponics. Now this over here is part of hydroponics because it's basically ran by plant nutrients mixed with water and machinery. Like, let's just say like, that the plant nutrients are like are in with the water in this bathtub over here. And then like it goes up through the pipes and into the black tray. And then the base is already there for like 30 minutes. And then the next 30 minutes, it's up to the top. Then it's kind of like playing Wheel of Fortune, but really slow. <laughs> okay. Kind of like this. Yeah, yeah. And also in the aquaponics over here, like we usually put the tall and white plants in the media beds. So that way, if we put them in the float beds, they would sink. 
So like for example, like the palm tree, the avocado trees, the lemongrass, the albino eggplants, and also the, the lemon shrub, the tea tree, the multicolored eggplants and the purple eggplants, and the Italian like Romana and the zucchinis, which are hot dog sized, and most of all, corn. And here are some like samples to look at, like from the multicolored eggplants and uh, purple eggplants that are finishedly like growing and harvested. And here are the hot dog sized zucchinis, like from Italia. This is one of our float beds in the lab. So um, the way these work is we use the water that's filtered from the fish with their waste, and then we use those, that as the nutrients. And then we have these um, foam rafts, which the plants are suspended in, and that flows right on the water, which is how they get all their nutrients. So there's no soil anywhere in here. Um, and, uh, then we also, we grow a lot of lettuce, um, kale, herbs in here. So a lot of leafy greens in the float beds. Um, we also, the lights up here, they're controllable, so we can change um, what colors we have in the lights to sort of see how that would affect the plant growth. Um, and we also have sensors all throughout the lab, which we can use to monitor plant growth, the temperature, the pH of the water, to make sure we're growing them efficiently and safely. So, um, and then also over here we have these um, grow towers, and they are hydroponic, so there's no fish in this system. Uh, we dose it weekly um, with nutrients manually. Um, and we have kale, um, herbs, we have some uh, lunchbox peppers over there. Um, so we grow a lot of stuff in there as well. Uh, we're working in developing the automatic fish feeders for the uh, aquaponics lab. Uh, the reason we're doing this is uh, in case of an emergency that we can't get to the fish, uh, say like there's a blizzard or something and we can't get to them, they won't starve. Um, and so me and Kenya have been working for about the last two months on developing and prototyping this. It's still in very early stages of prototyping. Um, but yeah, Say how it works. Oh, okay. So this, uh, how it's going to work is that it's for, there's going to be a container that's going to drop food into here, and once the food is dropped into here, this is going to this is going to turn, and as it's turning, it's going to dispense food through here, and the food is going to drop into here where there's going to be a weight sensor, and okay. once it reaches a specific weight of the amount of food the fish need to eat, this will turn and drop the food into the tank. Very high tech. Uh, microgreens are. Uh, different plants that are cut and uh, produced in their infancy, uh, whereas they will grow to the actual plant. But here, when they're uh, uh, harvested, they have all the flavors of the plant would actually have. So here, I actually have uh, some microgreens that you can try. Okay. So here, these look nothing like it, but these are actually a species of pea. These are uh, tendril peas. They don't look like it, but they have all the flavors a pea would actually have. Uh, here, I will give you. Yes, this. they do. Those are delicious. Yeah. Uh, here we have, if I can get it, these are radishes. Now, they really don't look like it, but they have all the flavors of radish. Here, you may try that. <laughs> Gotta finish the pea. <laughs> all right. Yes, really strong. You wouldn't yeah. anticipate that from such a small... And restaurants, well, those are great. I imagine yeah. restaurants would go crazy for these. Restaurants really do. There's a whole market now about having uh, microgreens in PA. Mm -hmm. uh, microgreens are something that are really delicate and you yeah. don't want transporting for a long time. Sure. And because they're so in demand right now, they're really an in thing. Uh, the idea of having them so close in this area instead of yeah. transporting from somewhere like California or maybe Florida where the climates are hotter, uh, these can be so much more fresh, oh, which so is a huge Incredible. thing. We right now have two deals working in process. We have a deal with the Hilton. They're interested in them. They have, we've sent some of our microgreens and they like them. We've also sent some microgreens to the harvest and we are working on a deal with them. We're working on, be working on price points with them shortly. So the big powerhouse for our aquaponic systems are our fish. And here you're looking at the next generation of our fish. We of course have the adult tilapia in our tanks and those eventually will be uh, going to different restaurants as fillets. Um, but until then, we have this next generation that is being raised uh, to take the place so we have a constant system going. Our end goal for this is that we'll have adults that are breeding. After they breed and have these uh, babies, we'll have the entire system going so that we are not relying on any outside supplier. Uh, but in the meantime, we do buy our tilapia from Lakeway Tilapia. Uh, they have a lot of really great resources for us. Uh, they've been working with us for several months now and have a lot of great information. Here is a 675 gallon tank. Um, okay. Earlier, quite entertaining, we had uh, one of our dominant fish, which built this nest right over here. 
uh, they were having a territory fight, uh, rather entertaining to watch. Um, because they don't really harm each other, they just kind of have, uh, they lock jaws and push each other backwards. <laughs> Uh, but the water is pumped out of this tank, and it's that swirl clarifier you see to your right. And it works similar to a uh, full swirl clarifier where the solids go down to the bottom, and the clean water, uh, free of solids, goes pumped out into our grow beds. At the bottom of those clarifiers, they slowly break down, the, the waste slowly breaks down, releasing the compounds uh, that are essential to the growth of our plants, specifically nitrates. And because we have higher concentrations of nitrates in the system, we can grow much more nutritious food because they're in a stress-free environment. Because there's no wind, there's no ice, no frost. Uh, just generally a very uh, safe environment uh, for the plants to grow as they please. So in here we have a little bit of everything. You know, We have two racks and we have a media bed, so it's really awesome because we can really do a lot of stuff with here. So I just finished my experiment with the lights and here's my slides here. We put higher red and lower red in the um, each one, and this one you're seeing is the low red, and this one is the high red, and this is the plant in there is the five star lettuce, which is this one we just harvested it, so there's not much to see. But five star lettuce is a combination of multiple lettuces, so there's a little bit of red, a little bit of green, different types of stuff. It's a really great plant, and as you can see in these pictures, this the the my experiment grew way better, but the but the colors weren't as good. So the huh. colors weren't as rich. So what we're planning to do is we're planning to grow it all the way, like so it's big and nice, and then we're gonna switch it over so it has nice red colors. Yep. So it's almost like genetically modifying it, but no chemicals or anything. So it's completely organic. It's amazing. It really is. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is really awesome. I'm gonna interrupt you once or twice because it's circus exemplary. So if you can imagine the the low ceiling warehouse um, space oh, yeah. that's available in the city and that it might be empty. The rest, the lighting recipes, again, what he's doing is just tricking the, the plant's genetics. It, it, we're not, it's not a, a manipulation other than just calling a, a different season. The plant thinks it's in a different season, might root more, might grow more, might fruit sooner. But his recipes, when applied to a farm in, in a warehouse that's otherwise abandoned, would be maximizing the growth and mass, maximizing the profit potential for the urban farmer. Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's what yeah. he's working out. And then uh, you're learning about, so uh, literally the color of the light will affect the color of the plant. Yeah, the color of Which the light can affect the I'm color not sure of the plant. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost a curveball almost because you they just expect this to grow yeah. how it grows. But it also does that. So red light um, can tend to make it grow out more instead of up. Okay. And blue light does the opposite where it makes it grow up instead of out. And which is also a really awesome thing. And then the white light is like almost just like the base of sunlight. Uh, so one of the biggest things in any science field in any lab is cross-contamination. So students right now, this lab hasn't been fully certified yet, these hoods in particular, uh, because we have the genetics lab, we're just gonna have the person come out once to certify both. Once he does, these workstations will be sterilized by students every day. It's a part of the lab safety protocol, so that way any work a student is doing here, if a college professor is working right next to them, they know there's no cross-contamination. So that's something our students are going to be covering in the future, is how to make sure you avoid contamination, yeah. you can get good growth. Um, here we have it staged right now a Venus flytrap experiment. Um, Venus flytraps are uh, very hard to come by, it's difficult just to go to the store and get Get one uh, because they, they tend to die before mm -hmm. they reach maturity. So one of our students out there that was towards the beginning of the tour, Carson Hare, he's one that wants to be a biologist when he graduates. So this is an experiment that he's really excited to start after the grand opening concludes. Oh great. We're really hoping that colleges and universities will come in and say, yep, your lab protocols are in line with what we're sure. looking for. They can provide us feedback on what we're doing well. If there's something they want enhanced, that way if a student comes in here, they familiarize themselves with the lab, and then they want to go to college, it works in their, the college's favor as well to say, hey, this is already certified by Messiah. This is already certified by Penn State. And it makes yeah. the student more comfortable yeah. when they want to explore that college sure. option. Yeah. We're also look, looking at opportunities for the students to co-publish 
with their mentors uh, from higher ed and the Department of Agriculture. So we just modeled uh, co-publishing with the Department of Agriculture uh, with, with three small publications we just put out to just prime the pump. So now uh, we want to put students forward to be able, because what, sure. a, what a yeah. great way to um, validate your experience and, and get that leg up for admission. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So very impressive. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Very